So, yeah, as it's um, on the screen, it says here, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So remember last week we've discussed about Psalm 91 to 12, and today we will be finishing the whole chapter from 13 to 17. And last week we've learned that life is short, amen? And there's a need for us as followers of Christ to maximize our lives for the glory of God alone. Every, um, to enjoy life, of course, that's, that's what God wants us to, uh, to, to do as well, enjoy life while we are serving Him. And whatever we, whatever, you know, whenever we are on a rock bottom suffering, we are struggling, or whenever we are in the peak of our success or victory, we need to make sure that our lives are living in the full, that our lives are living to the fullest. Amen? Amen. And just to give you a quick summary for la from last week, um, sorry, Phil, that's, yeah. For the summary, um, the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is an everlasting God. From everlasting to everlasting, He is constant, He is the same. Amen? Amen. And number two, He is our eternal refuge. He will rescue us. Let's offer our lives to the Lord to serve Him faithfully. Amen? Because He is our refuge. And number three, let's turn away from sinning. Why? Because sinning causes us not to fulfill the Lord's calling in our lives. Amen? And fourth, let us allow ourselves to be used by the Lord while there's time, while we, are, while we still have our strength. And um, one day we will face Him and it would be nice, it would be very great to hear from the Lord saying that, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen? And today, today we are all blessed to be here and we will study the second part of Psalm 90, which as I've said earlier, it was, it's, um, it's in verses 13 to 17. We will learn about the steadfast love and the compassion of God. And the title of the message for today is Turning into God's steadfast love and compassion. Amen. Praise God. So let's pray first. Father God, we just want, Lord God, to offer this time to you. We just want, Lord God, to offer, Lord God, this time, Lord God, where we can learn about your words. Father God, thank you, Lord God, for teaching me. Thank you, Lord God, for guiding me. May you just um, also allow me, Lord God, to convey, Lord God, your message to your people, O oh God. And Father God, may you just um, teach me, Lord, how to do this. And Lord, um, we just want, Lord God, to lift your name on high this afternoon. Thank you, Father God. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So verse 13, we will start in verse 13. Oh Lord, oh come back to us. How long will you delay? Take pity on your servant. Moses started this verse, Lord, come back to us. So since it was believed that Psalm 90, by the way, Moses is the author of the, uh, Psalm 90, and it was believed that Psalm 90 was, was, was um, written when, um, when the period of, wild, uh, of wilderness wandering, when, when these Israelites were suffering, when they were lost, when, when a generation of Israelites, Israelites uh, perished in the desert, readily suggests itself as the background of this psalm. So this is also considered as, as the oldest, the oldest psalm of 150, of 150 psalms that has ever written. And at this period of time, Moses felt that the Lord seemed abandoned them in the wilderness. Moses felt that because of people's sin, the Lord allowed them to wander and suffer. And that's true, right? And this is a great realization that at, at times God would allow us to feel that we are abandoned so we can realize that we need Him or we need God. Amen? Although God never abandons us, God never forsakes us, God never leaves us, but you know, Lord, the Lord is allowing that to happen for us to realize the importance of having Him in our lives. Amen? And Moses realized that in their distress and difficulties, God is their hope. Amen? So he prayed to God, Lord, you're, you're the only one, you're the only one who can save us from this, from this wandering, from all this suffering. And in times of drought, in times of hardship, in times of scarcity, only God can rescue us. Only God can satis satisfy us and He is our anchor. He is our living hope. Amen. Can we say that, everyone? 
He is our living hope. So that's our number one point for today. Later, I'll be having, um, I'll be circulating a piece of paper and we will be having a quiz. So, <laughs> so just kidding. So, number one point is He is our living hope. Amen? A lot of testimonies that I have encountered, they say they felt incomplete and dissatisfied, even in abundance, even in many things in their lives, they felt incomplete, they felt, you know, dissatisfied. And only God alone can, can satisfy us. Amen? Even with so many friends, you know, I've, I've met a lot of, you know, super friendly fr uh, people in the Philippines and they've got a lot of friends. But, you know, when, when they turn, even my personal testimony, when I turned away from the Lord before, I met a lot, a lot of friends. But, you know, at the end of the day, there is an emptiness in my heart. There will be an emptiness that, you know, you keep on longing the Lord. And, you know, that's the, that's the triggering point of waking up from the sins and going back to the Lord. That, that emptiness, that incomplete feeling. Amen? And, and verse 14 says here, moving on, Satisfy us um, each morning with your unfailing love. What a wonderful verse. With your unfailing love. So we may sing for joy to the end of our lives. Human, human, human love fails. Some days we disappoint our loved ones. Some days we are being turned down by our families. This is real. This is happening. No family is perfect. No wife is perfect. Only husbands. No, just <laughs> Just to give you a wake up. <laughs> if some, some single lady is here, oh no! <laughs> Reacted. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's a joke. That's a joke. Um, and Moses came to that realization in his life. If you have God's love and satisfaction in your heart, then there's a reason for us to sing joyfully, even in our deathbed. It says here, so we may sing for joy to the end of our lives. I remember my... my um, my, um, what do you call it? Father-in-law. Father my father-in-law. <laughs> so when, when he was already in his deathbed, my, my mother-in-law was singing and praising, singing, offering worship songs to him, and he's really in peace. You know, even Shalom's friend, Chell, who just recently died uh, a month ago, a month ago, weeks ago, you know, before, before she died, she was singing. Good, good father. A good, good father. And you know, he, she was blessed with that song, but in the same way, he has blessed so many people who watched that song. Ah, you, you who watched her singing. Amen? So, that's the peace. That's the peace. It, uh, Moses actually said it so that we may sing for joy. That even in their last days, even in their deathbed, they will have, you know, peace. They will have joy. Amen? And that will go to our second point. Only God can fully satisfy us. Amen to that? Yeah. We can sing because we can we can be assured that we are going to be with the Lord forever. I'm not making this up, but you know, this is what the Bible says. He gives satisfaction and assurance to his children, and that assurance cannot be taken away from us if we have the Lord. In Psalm 23, verse 6, surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the, uh, in the house of the Lord forever. And surely that when we are under the Lord's will, His goodness, His unfailing love will pursue us. Amen? It will, you know, always, always when we are with the Lord, His unfailing love and, you know, um, His love always covers us. Amen? Amen? Even in the last days of our lives. Okay, moving on to verse 15. Give us gladness in proportion to our former misery. Replace the evil years with good. So this is a good prayer from Moses. We may occasionally face troubles, but when the Lord, um, but that's when the Lord can shine His face to us. So sometimes when we feel like trouble, that's when we encounter the Lord, right? Righteous people turn to God when trouble comes, but some people choose to solve their problems by themselves and we've, we've actually you know we've actually um, encountered so many testimonies as well that you know they've they've made this this they, they're they're trying to solve some things in their own in their own selves but at the end of the day 
the Lord will still, you know, um, the Lord's plan will still uh, prevail. I was actually blessed with, um, sorry Mao, if I can mention you, with Mao and Arnie's testimony. Um, I'm not sorry, but, you know, <laughs> I'm very blessed, sorry. Um, uh, with, with, with their testimony that they were actually longing for, to have the, their, 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 their son, their, uh, um, their child, and they've been living in Singapore for a long time, and when they, they, they move here, they just offered everything to the Lord, and in the Lord's perfect time, the Lord gave them a baby boy. Amen? And praise the Lord. When, when they were actually sharing it to me, it was actually encouraging to myself. That's why, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just um, cascading as well those um, um, good testimony, the blessing. So the Lord in His own time will bless us. And as long as we really dedicate and offer our lives to Him. Amen? Because God has its own time to, you know, fulfill His promises in our lives. Amen. And our third point for uh, today is He gives revival to those who come to Him. Amen? Do you believe in that? In Psalm 30 verse 11, You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my, uh, my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. So sometimes when we sing, when we go away from the Lord, that when, and when, when we come back, He gives revival. And He turned our mourning into dancing. Amen? He gives us joy. He gives us joy. And in Psalm 34 verse 19, the righteous person faces many trouble. Have you experienced this? Like, oh, man, I'm doing everything for you. Why is it that, you know? I'm still having a lot of issues in life. But here it goes. But the Lord comes to rescue each time. Amen? And that's a promise. That's, that's for sure. That we may face so many troubles in life. You know, sometimes being righteous can make you trouble. Like, for example, if you're a businessman, you are, you are doing your business righteously. And like, for example, if you're doing a business in the Philippines, if you're a righteous person in the Philippines and you're doing a business, people want, you know, that those, those people in the government that will sign, especially with big projects, they won't honor it. They won't sign it. Because you're not giving under the table. It's not just in the Philippines. I believe even, you know, in, in, the, in the whole world, it's, it's happening as well. It's um, corruption. And then, um, you know, um, yeah. So, the righteous person faces many trouble, but the Lord comes to rescue each time. Amen. I remember Pastor Peter's testimony. Uh, Peter Tanji is one of the um, 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 respected pastor in pastors in uh, in the Philippines, and he was doing business, and he was really very faithful of doing his business straight. No under the table, no no side trips, no shortcuts. But you see, God has really um, um, blessed him with. With a, with a church, with a church. And of course, his business also prevailed. Amen? And he was so blessed with a loving and wonderful family as well. Amen. So verse 16, let your servants see your work again. So Lord, please, um, 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 uh, here we are, Lord. Can you please um, um, look at us, Lord, and please um, let your children see your glory again. Lord, Please revive us. Lord, please forgive us. When things go wrong in our lives, come back to God. Don't pile it up. Go straight to the Lord because He forgave and He can restore us again. Yeah. You know, sometimes when, when the Lord, when, when, you're, when you're sinning and the devil would really, oh, don't, don't come to church. Don't go there. Don't call your, your elders. Don't call your pastor. Don't ask for, just call your friends. Go there and, you know, go to the pub or go to somewhere. You know, but still, you know, the Lord, the Lord will, the Lord will revive us. The Lord can restore us as long as we go to Him. Amen. And don't pile it up when we feel that we've sinned. Lord, I give this to you. I offer this to you. Because when we, when, when we pile, it's actually a harder to lift a bucket of water than a glass of water, isn't it? So while it's still, you know, you don't, you don't pile up your sins. Amen. And it will just harbor in your heart. Amen? And verse 17, the last verse, and may the Lord our God show us His approval. May our effort successful. Yes, may our effort successful. 
The psalmist asked that God would display his splendor to his servants and extend his favor to them rather than consume them from his wrath. Then they would enjoy success in their labor. The Lord is the one, I think verse 17 is double there, yeah. The Lord is the one who can give approval with all our efforts. In whatever we do, let's always ask the Lord's approval. Not our own desires, not in our, in our own um, capacity, and that for sure, our efforts will be successful. And that would bring us to our fourth point, the Lord gives success to our to his children, to us. Amen? Church, let's let's all be um, let's all be assured that the Lord that, 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 that the Lord is forever compassionate. That his nature being God, that's this that's his nature being 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 the God, being um, compassionate God. Whatever situation we are on today, the Lord knows each one of us, and whatever test whatever whatever um, situation that we are on today. He is constant and compassionate to His people. Amen? His compassion to His people gives life. Amen? In the New Testament, we also see how compassionate Jesus um, to those people who are longing to be with Him. So I have this um, three, three uh, narratives here. Number one, in Matthew 13, verse 13 to 14, this is when, um, 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 when Jesus actually... Um, Heal those who are sick. So as soon as Jesus heard the news, he left the boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard, um, heard that he was head uh, he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. In verse fourteen, Jesus saw that huge crowd and he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them. So Jesus had compassion on them and healed. Their sick, their sick, uh, their their yeah, their sickness. Jesus was probably tired that day. You know, I could just imagine, you know, uh, healing and going to different places. Of course, um, the Lord got tired as well and needs some rest and have some time alone. But the crowd started to follow him. Our selfless, uh, our selfless Jesus had compassion for the people who sought to follow him. Who trusted that Jesus can heal them, who trusted that Jesus can restore them, and yes, they were healed through the power of Jesus. Church, Jesus is a compassionate God. When we come to Him, surely He welcomes us. When He began to walk with Him, He will surely reveal Himself to us. Amen? Just like what Jesus did. So, He revealed Himself to the people, and people started following Him. Same with us. If we, if Jesus has already revealed ourselves to us, our, our, uh, his himself to us, and we just need to follow, and we just need to obey him. Amen? Amen. So when he revealed himself to us, we obey and we follow him. Amen? Amen. Second, in Matthew 20, 30 to 34, two blind men were sitting beside the road when they heard that Jesus was coming that way. They began shouting, Lord, Son of David, have mercy, have mercy on us. And in verse 31, Be quiet! The crowd yelled at them, but they only shouted louder. They're very persistent. Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. When Jesus heard them, he stopped and called, What do you want for me to do for you? And the Lord said, We want to see. And the Lord, um, in verse 34, Jesus felt sorry and touched their eyes instantly. They could see. Mm -hmm. Then they followed him. So the Lord was very sorry and compassionate about these two people. This narrative also tells us that when, that when we start declaring the Lord and confessing through our mouth, he will surely listen. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Lord, son of David, twice. And then the Lord, you know, um, um, welcomed them. They began um, shouting, um, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when other people even commanded them to stop shouting, they still were even more persistent in declaring the Lord in their mouth, despite of the limitations that they have. When people focus on their limitations, it hinders them to see and experience the Lord's compassion on them. They will, be they will begin isolate 
themselves and not see the, the uh, see the Lord's power and goodness in their lives. When we, because when we are weak, He is strong. When we admit our limitation and offer, limitations and offer it to God, then He will definitely reveal His power to us. Because Jesus doesn't look in our limitations, but rather He looks into our hearts and motives in serving Him. Amen? Are you still awake? Yes. Praise God. <laughs> Furthermore, um, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Now, the third example would be in Luke 23, 39 to 43. So, so one of the criminals hanging beside him spoke, So you are Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're, while you're, while you're at it. Verse 40, but the other criminal, criminal protested, Don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. This is a beautiful passage as well, that you know, the Lord, even at the end of your life, He can be very merciful to you. He can be very, very gracious to you. He can be very, very compassionate to you. Even, you know, the, the other, the other um, sinner don't even recognize it, but the other one admitted it. And, next, next slide please, Phil. Then he said, Jesus, this is the other one, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. So even in his, you know, last hour maybe, the Lord can still be compassionate. That's how compassionate the Lord is. Amen. I mean, isn't it great that we are serving a loving and compassionate God? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, in conclusion, number one, God uses our dark and deep situation for us to come to Him and realize that we need Him because He is our living hope. And I can personally attest it to myself that He is my living hope. Amen? Amen. Because He rescued me from darkness. Amen. Secondly, God can fully satisfy us um, things here on earth can satisfy, but the Lord can only fully satisfy us. We can have, you know, food on our table. We can have houses. We can have cars. We can have, you know, it, yeah, yes, these things can, can, you know, can satisfy us, but not fully satisfy us. Amen. Amen. And we should always acknowledge the Lord when we when we when we receive any blessing from the Lord. So that's, you know, um, I'm I'm always telling that to my children that always be thankful as soon as you wake up be thankful that we are on this bed waking up on this bed not all you know children in in Zimbabwe children in Thailand children in other places of the world cannot even sleep mm -hmm. because of the bombing because of um, the, the you know yeah the things that are happening amen God can only God only God can uh, fully satisfy us so when we, when we feel set, uh, dissatisfied, when we feel dissatisfied, turn to Jesus. As he said in Matthew 11, verse 28, cast your burdens upon me and I will give you rest. Because the Lord can satisfy and the Lord can give us rest. Amen? Third point, he revives his people um, when they come and acknowledge him. So when we come to Jesus and ask for forgiveness, ask for repentance, he revives. Amen? Verse, um, sorry. Number four, and the Lord is um, the only one who can give us success. The Lord can only, um, is the one who can give us success and reward our labor. Amen? Even if we work 24-7, only God can really give us the satisfaction. Only God can really give us the success. Amen? Praise the Lord for that. And the fifth, with all these concluding points to wrap up, let us be assured that the Lord is an ever-compassionate God. An ever-compassionate God. And we will be ending with this verse in Psalm, Psalm 145, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. Amen. Amen. So always remember, 
that the Lord is ever compassionate. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And He loves us so much. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord God, for revealing yourself to us this afternoon. Thank you, Lord God, for reminding us, Lord God, that from everlasting, Lord God, to everlasting, oh God, you will never, ever change, oh God. And thank you, Lord God, because you are the one, oh God, who can help us, Lord God, even in our deepest um, situation, Lord God, even in our deepest situation in our lives, oh God. Father God, you will be our helper, you will be our deliverer, oh God. And thank you, Lord God, because you have revealed our, uh, yourself um, to us, oh God. Father God, help us, Lord God, to acknowledge you, Lord God, as you revealed yourself to us, oh God. Help us, Lord God, to serve you in spirit and in truth, oh God. Help us to always be accorded or aligned, oh God, to your plans, oh God. And that we would be more satisfied, oh God, in your presence, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, because as we um, end this um, 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 series, oh God, of in, in um, some um, 90, Lord God, Father God, thank you, Lord God, for reminding us, Lord God, that you are an ever compassionate, Lord, uh, you are an ever compassionate God, oh God, and you are um, rich in um, 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 steadfast love, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, we bless your name, and we give you praise. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you.